Mr. Truck here. I am somewhere in the mountains of Colorado. What is this called? The El Dorado State Park? Yes. Out in the middle of the trees in the forest with this new 150 diesel F-150. This happens to be a Lariat, an FX4 package, so we got off-road stuff, so we're kind of going off-road. Pulling a CM horse trailer, and it's only 5,500 pounds. This trailer, this truck, is in a four-wheel drive, is rated to pull 11,000 pounds. We can go all the way up to 11,400 if it's a two-wheel drive. But this is so cool. So I have this group of engineers here, they know everything, so I'm asking a lot of questions. So tell me, what's the horsepower on this? 250 horsepower. And what's the torque? 440 foot-pounds. And what's the payload? About over 2,000 pounds. Yes. The specifics? 2020. You're doing good. That's in a two-wheel drive. So yeah, this is fun. This is a crew cab. This is that aluminum body. We've done off-road with it, we've done a lot of stuff with it, now we're going to do a mileage loop with it, but we're up here pulling trailers in the mountains, having fun with this new Ford Diesel Power Stroke 3 liter V6. Come join us. Mr. Truck here, I'm with this big team from Ford. These are Ford engineers. So what's your name and what do you do? Anita Bursi, Engine System Supervisor Applications. Cool. And what's your name? Um, Mimi Lay, um, Fuel and Performance for F-150. Cool. And with Ken. Ken Pumford, Base Engine Design Supervisor. Well, cool. And I'm just Mr. Truck. Okay. I've had a couple of bands. Oh, sorry. Are you recording? Yeah. Oh. Some of all your secrets. Oh. Okay, Don. What was it again? <laughs> Pumford. Pumford. I've never heard of Pumford. I'll be darned. So it's a New England. England, old, jolly old England. Well, that's pit pit shield. See the rock. That's cool. Anyhow, we are driving this new Ford Diesel Power Stroke. It's the baby Power Stroke, the three liter V6, and it's made in England. Yes, Dagenham Engine Plant. Cool, and you know how long it took to develop. I mean, when you started deciding, I know back in the old days it was like a 4.4 uh, Land Rover engine in the 80s, late 80s, and it never developed. Like no, nobody's diesels back then went anywhere because the recessions that were going on. We all expected a lot of half-ton diesels, and that didn't happen. So we're so tickled that we're starting to get some of these now. You can get that better fuel mileage. I mean, you're, you've got a rating of 30 miles a gallon on the highway in two-wheel drive, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Now, this new three-liter, it's developed, to get, Ford owns the plant, but they also, in the same assembly line, make Land Rover and Jaguar. Correct. Then there are those three liters, three-liter V6 diesels? Yes, they are. Okay. So what's different about them? What makes, what makes this engine unique in the, in the power strip versus those English cars? Well, it was designed uh, specifically for the F-150, so we took a foundation or a fundamentals approach and we analyzed the engine um, from uh, for the F-150. So we took all the components on the engine, made uh, computer analytical models of them, just like we would for our, any brand new Ford engine, right. and then put them through the duty cycle that's required for F-150. And if any changes or tweaks were required, uh, we did that. And then we put the engine through the same testing uh, that would be required of any engine designed in-house at Ford. You know, the same dynamometer durability tests, mm -hmm. and then uh, reacted accordingly. So it's it's designed and tested for F-150. So you've got a unique what uh, crankshaft? Um, different or what else? The, the crankshaft now is common, oh, uh, but common. we but uh, based on our our analysis and on our testing uh, we made improvements to the process the manufacturing process um, and then Jaguar was more than happy to take our improvements um, we have a unique turbocharger on the engine a ball bearing Honeywell uh, VGT turbo cool um, our exhaust system is unique our block uh, cylinder block is also unique that's largely for packaging um, we've got uh, changes to the air induction system, a uh, unique throttle body and air path. Um, and then the bottom end of the engine, uh, we've changed the main bearings in the engine. And we also have different uh, uh, ladder frame and oil pan. 
cool. So, and then the injectors are different? Or injectors are different as well. Um, That's pretty high pressure, 29,000 pounds. Yes, um, and it's uh, 200 bar uh, higher. Uh, the JLR uh, version runs at uh, 16, uh, sorry, 1800 bar or 2000 bar. So we are, there's only very slight differences between our fuel injection system and what the 6.7 liter Scorpion yeah, diesel engine Yeah, that's runs. what I was thinking, they were close. Well, that's cool. You got a lot of heritage in that engine, and you know, you're it's actually duty rated at 150,000 miles. Correct. Okay. Because I know you're you're keeping in line with the rest of the 150s, so you know that's I guess what all the engines in that class are rated at. But I would think the diesel, you guys can probably up it a little. Well, we're going to talk about turbos and engines, and I am here with Anita Bursé. Bursi. Bursi, there you go. And you're like a diesel engineer, what is it you do? I am the diesel engine system supervisor for the three liter power stroke diesel. Oh, it sounds like the big cheese. Okay, now tell me all about the turbo, the specs we talked about on that, the ball bearings, the size, and how the water keeps it cool after you shut it off. Okay, so the turbocharger on our engine was specifically sized for the F-150. We use a single turbocharger, meaning we bring our exhaust from both the left bank and the right bank together, and they are both feeding the turbocharger. It's a 60 millimeter wheel. It's a ball bearing turbo, so there's ball bearings within there. Um, and it is variable vein control. So we're able to control how much we're boosting um, by changing the angle of those veins through this actuator. Do you use that somewhat to control turbo legs? I noticed that I went to turbo leg, it was just kind of a slower acceleration. Um, they can control how much they're boosting. So when they open okay. the veins up, you get less boost, and when they close them down, you get more boost. Um, so the calibrators are able to adjust how much boost in any condition you're getting. Cool. Um, so the turbocharger is fed by both oil and coolant. The coolant will come in and um, helps to, to keep the center house. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. It's on the head. Um, and oh, yeah. when, the, when the water pump is circulating coolant, we have active flow through. But after the engine shuts down, the natural heat can continue to circulate coolant through the turbo. Does it run maybe five minutes or is it less than that? Or? The circulation, it's, ju it's just the natural heating right. of it. So however long it takes for your engine to cool down. Okay, well, hopefully by then the right. turbos too just cool down cool also. Well, yes. Cool. Um, so with our turbocharger, um, our air box starts at the very front of the vehicle, off towards the driver's side, um, so up in this area. We pull in that fresh air through our air filter, and we have our low pressure air that will come into the turbocharger. The turbocharger then compresses the air, it comes out, and we join up to our charger air cooler. Okay. The entrance is towards the passenger side of the vehicle. It's an air-to-air -air cooler, so we cool off that high-pressure air, um, and then we're able to bring that cold charged air in to our intake manifold. So we have a specific Y-pipe intake here for this application, which has a nice gentle turn um, pointing towards where that cold charge duct is coming from. So that helps us to minimize air induction losses of that of that charged air from the turbo through the cooler into the engine. Cool. The other thing about our unique intake manifold is our EGR. We're able to bring the exhaust gas for circulation in very close to our throttle plate. Oh, cool. And, and when we introduce the, that, that EGR very close behind the throttle plate, we have a lot of time for it to mix. Get a nice even mix of that exhaust gas with the fresh air before we split off to our left and right banks. Cool. Wow, so there's the, the cooler right there. There's the EGR cooler. And so on the outside of the engine, it's much better than stigma a valve cover like we used to have. That is awesome. Now, and you say these timing belts are good to last forever, huh? They're as good as chains? 150,000 mile capable belts. Okay. Well, that's cool. Um, there's, there's different schools of thoughts on chains versus belts. Um, one sort of nice side advantage of a belt is this cover here um, really is more of a dust cover. Whereas when you have a timing chain, you have a lot of oil, yeah. and you need to contain the oil. So there's a lot of, you have to be very uh, conscious of your sealing so you don't develop any oil leaks. Whereas this is really, uh, it's protecting from dust and debris, but our camshafts and our crankshaft have their own seals within. Okay. Um, so, it, you know, it gives you less leak paths for oil, so that's a nice side benefit of it. Now, is this like the big boys diesel where they have 
the water pump hooked to the crank and all these other things hooked to the crank or is that separate on this? Our water pump is uh, belt driven. Okay. Um, it's off so it's... Of, uh, of our inner uh, accessory dive shift. Okay. Um, the scroll development is within the block and it feeds both the left and right banks of the block. Okay. Uh, we have doing? our oil pump right here, um, which is on the front of the crank. It is a two-speed pump. It's got a high and a low mode, uh, and we're able to control that electronically, whether cool. we're in high or low mode. Wow. Well, that's awesome. Three liter V6, baby power stroke. Is that what it's called? Just the power <laughs> stroke. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. So this is the fuel pump, right? This is our high pressure fuel pump. Okay. So the fuel pump is driven oh, off the, of the camshaft yeah, with okay. the belt. It's direct, okay. This is also a 150,000 mile belt. Um, this is a Bosch fuel pump. Cool. We have Bosch injectors and Bosch fuel rails. Um, this is a nice shot of a cutaway. Most people don't get a chance to see inside of a diesel fuel rail. Well, it's pretty see, thick. Yes, very thick. So. Um, the pressures were a 29,000 psi system, wow. um, so we want to really make sure we, we um, manage that pressure. That's why you have such a thick wall relative to the cavity inside that's feeding those injectors. That's 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 pretty high, 29,000. Know, we've been at 26,000 for quite a while, but 29,000 psi. That's pressure. Mm -hmm. That's pressure. Well, cool. Well, thanks. Now we know all about this three-liter V6 power stroke. The wave of the future is probably the quietest engine out there in a diesel. We're very happy with the sound. Um, our, our team has done a great job making sure that this is a nice, quiet powertrain. Yeah, and you don't hear it out the exhaust. I mean, I've done some of those tests a few days ago. Mm -hmm. And you can hear right in front of the engine, but you don't hear it in the cab, you don't hear it at the exhaust. you got to go outside and stare at the radiator to hear the things running. Yep. Pretty cool. Well, awesome. thanks, Anita. Thank you. Well, that's good. That's what I wanted. I mean, it's going to be hard uh, without being bigger hills to test the um, the grade shifting on it. I need some pretty good hills, and we're not really in the too many of them here. But I'd like to see how it grade shifts, and you know, see if it's is uh, going to save you coming down the hill without using so much of your engine brakes without an exhaust brake. So I guess I'll I'll do my little test and see what it does here in the Rockies. Get up on the hike. But, uh, and when are you going to be doing that test? Well, I'm not week? sure. It all depends on when we get the trucks. I know TFL has got one coming, uh, and I'm trying to get a different model coming of the same truck. I want to try a two wheel drive. So, you know, that's going to give me the highest tow rating. So, that's what I want. I want like an XLT or an XL, like what you're going to see with the fleet guys. And I want to see, uh, of course, I guess you have two wheel drive models on all of them, right? So, I guess that wouldn't have to be uh, a fleet model, but I want to see what the maximum towing capacity, 11,400, will do going up, uh, you know, what TFL does on the Ike Gauntlet from mm -hmm. Dillon to the tunnels. So, that's uh, that's my goal, and then I want to, you know, going down the hill, see how well it grade shifts, because if it will hold in each gear, like we just did a little short run here where it actually, I was able to grade shift it twice on its own. I don't know exactly what grade we're on, pulling the 5,500 pounds, and then when I used the brake, it grade shifted again like it's supposed to. So it did three grade shifts, which is good, because that's what you want. You want more grade shifts than you do brake applications. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've got to find out when I get up on the hill and test it. So hopefully within the next two weeks or sooner, we'll get that data back, and then I can tell you if you got to get an exhaust breaker now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway... Well, this is great. I've been waiting for this truck for, you know, since the late 80s. Waiting so long. To yeah, get you this and a lot of people. F-150, yeah. I mean, we, we all had dreams back then. And it was, uh, that's what happened recessions. Recessions just slow everything down. So hopefully we won't have any recessions for a while. We can get more toys that we want to play with. Here, so here. what other secrets do you have about this F-150? I mean, the axles are the same. The frame's the same. Transmission's a little bit different. The transmission, as far as I'm aware, is the same. The calibration same. is uh, is specific for the diesel. So shift points are the same, or is it just the uh, uh, the hardware the is the clutch? same? Okay. And the transfer case had to have a couple of um, casting changes just to meet with our block. 
Okay. This is all just packaged, not function of the transmission. So the same amount of clutch discs in the packs and in the torque converter, all mm -hmm. that's the same. Okay, cool. Well, the more I drive it, the more I like it. And this is such a quiet engine. I mean, we're sitting in here now doing our Ford intelligibility mm -hmm. where we can talk to the back seat back and forth and, and hear each other. But you don't hear it out by the exhaust pipe, which is really strange. And you don't hear it inside. you got to get in front of the engine to hear any, any noise at all. So people are really going to like that. I mean, this, this will fit a lot of luxury classes, which I'm sure the luxury automobile so folks, they would, that's what they're looking for. So... I bet you're probably quieter than quite a few of the cars out there in diesel. I bet. I don't so, think anybody misses the old diesel noise. I know. Yeah, you used to be able to hear the old clang because, you know, diesel explodes. It doesn't catch on fire, so it has to make some noise. But, yeah, there's some diesels that are very loud. I'm well, wondering where in tarp picking are we? I don't recognize any of this stuff. <laughs> we were just talking about NBH and with yeah. the uh, high-pressure fuel system, it allows us to have multiple injections. Right. And that tailors the pressure rise. So rather than having uh, one or two large. Nope, keep going. You're going to put point .4. We're going to take a left on my cast. Oh, that's like the pilot injection, all those. E exactly. Events, yeah. Right. So that allows the pressure to come up um, less uh, suddenly. Yeah. And that's a big well, that, I enabler. see. That's, yeah, that's what pilot injection is all about was that the pre, pre uh, shot and all that. To take away that explosion. Exactly. To limit the explosion. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I understand. Yeah. So how many how many injection events occurs during combustion? I Is think there's up to four, five. 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 Well, that's pretty cool. All that you know. Is, of course, it's a less of an of impact. And that's why it's quieter. So that all makes sense. All the sophisticated electronics. Yep. Come a long way since the old UE injectors. Okay, who's after me now? Mm. We are pulling a 6,500 pound boat. This is the heaviest trailer they have up here for us. Let's see. Now, Mer now this has got the electronic e-brake. Does it shut off by itself when you take off? Or do you have to push the button down? And when you pull it forward to turn it on. I was actually even wondering if you had it on because the brakes, um, there are no brake signs on. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know if that's... Um, I have to read up on that. But yeah, that's, it's electric instead of being a mechanical with a cable and all that. It's all yeah. electronic, which is nice. But... Something new to learn, because I think it shuts off when you take off. But anyway, we're going up here through uh, Cold Creek Canyon. Go see some high country. We got a tow haul mode. Whoa, there we go. Uh, so here's we're a question: um, When you put it back on, did you put it back on tow haul mode? Because it's. Um, I didn't shut the engine off. So oh, that's yeah, true. you're right. If, yeah, if I would have shut the engine off, I would have to do all this stuff yeah. again. Right. I don't have to worry about the exhaust brake because there is no exhaust brake. But anyway. Um, that's something you're going to work on, right? <laughs> and you are, what's your name oh, and you title are, thing? Uh, so I'm Mimi Lay um, with Fuel Economy Performance Attributes under Vehicle Engineering. Okay, cool. I have a microphone I can put on that. Um, this is a quiet diesel. We may be fine. We'll just find out. I've got my seatbelt on. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Those darn engineers, you know how they are. <laughs> but anyway, no, this is, this is a cool road. we got some snow up here. We're doing a launch in Colorado, which I really appreciate. That, oh goodness, what are these guys doing? Must be surveyors. Let's see if I can get them both at the same time. Nah, they're gonna run away. But um, this is a 10 speed on the three liter V6 diesel, baby power stroke. <laughs> With one turbo. Eco diesel, I think, is what we like eco. to call it. Oh no, really? Because that's that's what Ram calls theirs. <laughs> we is eco diesel. We really? Are you calling it that? Because I think that is a, a Ram name. I I think that's what we're calling oh, it. Oh my let me, goodness! Let me give the. We'll just call it the small power stroke <laughs> diesel. No, this is it's the quietest diesel I've ever been in. Now it's it's in, in the cab you don't hear it. You walk back by the exhaust you don't hear it. But if you go in front of the engine you can hear it up there. Which is kind of weird. Usually you hear the exhaust more than anything. And this one you hear the engine, but you don't hear it inside. So it's not intrusive. You don't even know it's running. We did a great off-road run with it earlier. And that was so good. I mean, it did excellent climbing hills. would scare me on an ATV. But um, this, of course, has def fluid, diesel exhaust fluid. And it's a 5.6 gallon tank. 
which gives you some range. That's close to what a lot of the super duties now, super duties, heavy duties are. But um, it's 10 speed automatic. I think the torque converter may be a little different. Do you know if that is different on this diesel than what's on the Eco Diesel, Eco Ga Eco Boost? Um, uh, you're looking for the K factor? Well, just um, with, with, is the lockup, is everything the same on the torque converter as with the um, gas engines? Or? Yeah, well, actually, even the gas engines, depending on which one it is, have, you know, have a different um, K factor on Oh, them. so you got a bunch of so, lockups. So we have places. different. Yeah. And you're right, it's called Power Stroke Diesel. Yeah, <laughs> I think you're going to get trouble calling this Ram. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the uh, marketing's not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> ah, they don't care. This is a cool little road up here. Back and then getting into the foothills, and maybe we might even get in the mountains. There's a cool creek we get to park by and see some canyons. But uh, you know, I was really impressed how this handled off road. Of course, it's really it's, it's not what you think of as an off road truck with a diesel. Because I I've got notes somewhere on how much more. I think it's 450 pounds more this engine weighs than what the gas engines are weighing. About four, yeah, about 450. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, one of your engineers told me 350, so I'd be, I don't know if it's 350 or 450, but that's, it's not as much, you know, the bigger trucks can be 600 pounds on a big diesel like in your Super Duty. They get really much weight. So this one here almost negates, well, no, it negates about half of what you save with the weight of the aluminum, because that's like 750, um, 750 pounds, the, would you say? Uh, up to 750. Up okay. To 800, okay. But um, I mean, up to 800 pounds on with the aluminum that's already that's been launched since 15. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to find out some more stuff on the uh, the def tank fluid uh, because uh, so far I found out that at 500 miles it'll give you you have, you have a warning when your tank's getting low and it'll tell you that you got 500 miles left to go before you have to fill it up. And then it goes into a 50 mile an hour mode, and then it goes into a 5 mile an hour mode. So I'm trying to find out what the escalation is, what it is between those modes, how much time you have. Because I've been in these when they've been, not in this one, but I've been in other brands that have been out of diesel. And it's, you got to know where those Walmarts are, you got to know where all those gas stations are. Okay, yeah. But uh, yeah, this and this one is actually, in a two wheel drive version, is rated to tow 11,400 pounds. Payload, max payload can be on a two wheel drive, 2020. And I was noticing, I was looking at the Moroni on a Lariat four-wheel drive crew cab like this, and it actually is still 11,000 pounds. So that's not, you know, losing 400 pounds by going to a four-wheel drive. It might be worth it to keep a four-wheel drive, especially in Colorado. That poor guy in the semi, he's kind of a roadblock there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, on the 4x4, four four, it, 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 um, the max is about 11 one. It's 11 one. Oh, you got 11 one? Yep. Okay, because I was looking at one layer yet, just looking at their yeah. thing, and that was, that was pretty awesome. But that's uh, that's very impressive for a little diesel and a half ton. You know, they're all getting up there. I mean, Ford, I don't know what the, the Eco, Eco Boost probably has some close to 13,000 pound radius. Yeah, it does. So, you know, it's that's that's three quarter ton range. And I'm not really in the tone that much weight with a half ton, but I, I think 11,000 could be appropriate. With horses, I go 10% less when you've got live animals moving around. I like leaving to less. But this is a really cruising well. You know, like I say, it's quiet. The 10 speed, you don't hardly even hear it shift or feel it shift. I'm a little disappointed in acceleration. I accelerated on a flat piece, you know, a flat piece of road with this 6,500 pound boat back there, and it, you know, it just was kind of, kind of slow. So I, did, I didn't feel turbo leg. It wasn't like it totally lost everything and then kicked in. It was just kind of a, a slow response. I'm going to do some more of that acceleration and see if it's any different. And another thing that's cool about this is, you know, most diesels, when we're looking for spy photos of you and do diesels, you always look at the exhaust because they all have the little vents yeah, in okay. to cool it off. Gotcha. Well, these don't have that. Okay. There are no vents. And uh, the one the engineer explained to me that, you know, it was making noise and it didn't need it when they did you did your tests on it. So, which is kind of cool. You don't have to always look like you got a diesel on the exhaust pipe. And you don't hear anything out the exhaust pipe. It's just really weird. You know, you got to go back there. We wrapped it up with my camera and we got that, and that, uh, it did make a little noise there when you're going wide open. But, uh, yeah, it's very impressive. That's what, you know, people like, you know, you know, it's hard to tell. Some people like the hum of a diesel. They like the hum of a turbo. And I do at times too, but I also, you know, after a day long driving, it gets old. I like quietness. I'm, I'm old and I don't always like intrusive noises. 
And this one's equipped right. It's got the big power mirrors that telescope out and that fold. I really like Ford's towing mirrors and setups on all their trucks. Uh, I think you, you have back massagers too. Oh, oh, the back massage. Oh, oh, I gotta find them, see if I have them. I don't care about the GP. Oh, there it is. Oh, I love that. I love the massaging bottom rollers the best. Let's see. I gotta go massage. I, I guess the GPS would probably have to keep that on. Oh, I get lost. We'll be up here for days. <laughs> Cold Creek Canyon. They'll find us. hasn't told me to do anything lately, so I guess we're on the right route. Oh, uh, yeah. Is three this miles a, uh, before there's anything to be done. Yeah. Is this a class three receiver hitch? It's a uh, two inch, I'm sure. Uh, gosh, I don't know. I'm go, um, I'll, I'll go back and look because yeah. that's, I'm sure that's where they would be if 11,000 might even be a class four. It's getting up there pretty high. But nice narrow road you don't for have a, a boat. A, you're, you're still towing with just a 331, so it could yeah, be, could that's be a true. one and a half, so. Oh or no! I don't think this boat hitch would be a one. It'd be a, it'd be a two, so it'd okay. be a class three at least. Okay. But yeah, that's I don't think Ford doesn't change hitches. Like even a two, a, an F two fifty has that same three inch receiver that a three fifty has, and it's not ready to tow twenty one thousand. It's ready to tow eighteen thousand. So there's no reason to put that three inch on the then F two fifty. But that's I'm sure it's a marketing thing. But uh, yeah. And this has uh, got the integrated brake controller, or does it? It does, yeah. They, okay. all, they all do what... Oh, it's, it's way down. That's right. Yep. This has got that backup assist thing, so they, they bury the brake controller way down there. Yeah. Is that still convenient for you? No, it's not. It should be where this little knob is. I mean, I understand people are new to trailering. That trailering assist is cool, because they just play the knob. But me, you know, I'm used to going the opposite way of the steering wheel. I've been doing it for 40-some years. So to me, all those extra little aids are kind of annoying, but I can see the first time you do it, I mean, even the, the Bliss, all the cameras you have, they're really useful for people starting out toying, and it's good for them to be safe, but it, there's no reason for me to use most of that stuff. But anyway, yeah, the brake controller, see like there, you can't see it, you got, it's a little bit of shadow in here, and the reason I like to see it is because if you're on snowy roads, if you're on curvy roads, or somebody's cutting you off on the road, and your trailer's going crazy, you don't hit your foot brake because that'll make it go crazier. You want to grab the manual control and hit it and let the trailer straighten you out. And if I can't see it, because you only got half a second to find it and pull it to, to save your life, you need to be able to see it. Ford the first one to put it, the integrated brake control rim, which I appreciate. I think it was 2005, and they had it in the right place, and then they got more gadgets, and they lowered it. But it's in the right place on the Super Duty. You know, Super Duty is not rack and pinion electronics. You couldn't put that backup assist on them. They're, you know, recirculating ball, the old style steering. But is this a Lariat or which which model are we in? Yeah, it should be a Lariat. Uh, it's, no, I'm sorry, it's Platinum. So it's actually, Oh, we're way up there. Yeah. So. See, Platinum is the top of the line, I think. Nope, nope. Uh, it's limited. Limited top of the line on half ton yeah. Platinum on the Super Duty. It's confusing. But. Anywho, it's a nice driving truck. Let's see, I'm going to keep playing with the accelerator. See, too, it's another thing. Maybe it accelerates better than I think it does because you don't hear it. You step on the gas, and there's a little hum back there. It's all you hear. It's not like that 5.0 or 3.02 V8. Okay. That thing purrs like a kitten when it takes off. But I suppose all that's going to change. We'll all be electric soon, so. Oh, no. That's not, all. That's, I mean, that has some heritage with it, that 5 liter. Yeah, I'm glad they kept it. I really am. Like a lot of people like the V8. I like the V8. And we don't hardly get them in the media fleet. I'd like to you know, do some more testing with them, show what they'll do against the 3.5 EcoBoost, but we don't get them. I mean, I'd love to have a 5 liter in the fleet so we can go out and climb the mountain, do the Icon, and do all that stuff. Well, certainly. you got to get out of those stinky old hotels. Yeah. <laughs> you only drink so much coffee standing out there in the cold. <laughs> you got to do something else. So we are what, 250 horsepower and 440 torque. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it kind of it peaks at very low. Yeah, at least that's, that's one of the things that I like about it. That's pretty good. Is it 1600 or is it 1700? Like 1750. Yeah. In the old days, like Ford that. was the lowest 
on the 7.3, and then in Cummins back then was the highest, and then it all kind of reversed. Then Ford went up, and Cummins went down, and now I think Ford went back down. So that's a very good range when you have your torque start off low. That gives you that starting ability, and then you get into your horsepower range for your acceleration. So when you're running hard and fast, you've got everything working for you, horsepower and torque. All right, here's a hill. I'm accelerating. Well, I hope I'm accelerating. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's a little to, slow. Is that to me, it? if you want to be at a speed and and you don't have to hear it, that's even better. Yeah, yeah. I just, you know, what's kind of it's hard to test this this way because I just got through having. Well, I still have the Ford F three fifty Power Stroke. 6.7, and the last week I had a 250. Yeah. Well, those things without a load are a race car. You yeah. know, are, and under a load, they're good, but uh -huh. you know, when they're empty, they are fast. Yes. And uh, very capable. So, yeah, I'm very used to that acceleration, so it's going to be a little different adapting to this. I mean, it's very smooth. I mean, the shift's Your very waypoint smooth. is ahead on the left. But I mean, you know, so that, I mean, it's very smooth. Acceleration's smooth, the transmission's smooth. I would just like to see a little more speed out of this engine, a little more acceleration. But it's the first year of it, I guess I shouldn't be too critical. Because I know someday maybe we'll get an exhaust brake. I'll be so happy. <laughs> In the mountains, you need an exhaust brake. It saves lives, but you know, it's, I know you cannot do everything at once. It gets expensive. Oh, waypoints, we gotta stop here. And, Tons of pickup truck questions, right? Right. Where do we go for the answers? We go to the Truck Nuts book. Because we're Truck Nuts. <laughs> and we wrote the book, Truck Nuts. We're nuts about truck. The ultimate guy to buy a truck or yep. looking at a truck or judging a truck. You know, whether it's diesel versus gas, new versus used, what your teenagers should learn about trucks, all that. You do all kinds of cool tests. Yeah, we do a lot of testing. We do the Ike Gauntlet, world's toughest towing test up the mountain and down the mountain. We do MPG testing on the highway, loaded with trailers. Yeah. We do off-road testing. A lot of that data is in this book as well, and it's a one-stop shop for truck information. That's true. We test trucks, maximum capacity, up to biggest grades you can do on the interstate. Yep. So we really put them to the test. And, you know, you can get all the facts you can't find anybody else. We do MPG tests which you can't find on any sticker anywhere. So, you know, all the stuff that you can't find is in the book. And you can find the book at trucknutsbook.com. There are links to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all the other bookstores as well. So read about your truck nuts. <laughs>